I think my mom is going to do good because every single year she makes me a costume. Well, I don't know the proper terminology for the dress components, you know? Like, you went to fashion school. I'm taking everything off. Well, here's the shoes. You get the idea. If y'all know me, you should know two things. Number one, I love throwing themed parties. And number two, I love making DIY costumes. So for Zaya's fairy garden, enchanted, magical, mystical, woodland themed birthday party, it only felt right that she would have a costume to wear to the party. But the thing is, we already dressed up as fairies two Halloweens ago. So it kind of feels like been there, done that. I definitely didn't want to just recycle that same exact costume or do that same exact vibe. I mean, that's no fun. I wanted her outfit for this party to be different and special, so I knew I had to make something new. And I'm gonna try and see if I can do better than what I made for Halloween. I'm also kind of feeling the pressure because the most recent costume I made for Zaya was this past Halloween when she was Rapunzel, and that DIY costume low-key went viral. So now I kind of feel like everybody's looking at me like, ooh, what costume are you gonna make next? So let's just hope this one lives up to the hype. Hi, my name is Zaya. This year I'm turning eight, and my birthday party theme's gonna of the Enchanted Fairy Garden. For my party, I wanted my outfit to be like pretty sparkly fairy wings and like to be all flowery and fairy type and like woodland. For my birthday party, I want to look pretty and like stand out a little bit. When my mommy told me she was making me a special fairy garden outfit, I got really excited. So I hope my mommy can make this costume a little bit more like woodland and fairy type and awesome because last year for Halloween it wasn't like that good. It was just like too pinkish, too Barbie-ish. I always start any project like this off by gathering inspo pics and Pinterest is my favorite place to do that. You can pretty much find anything on Pinterest. And for this costume, I was inspired by cosplayers, Halloween costumes, AI generated images of fairies, illustrations of fairies, the classic fairy characters like Tinkerbell, and then also just general woodland vibes. I know my daughter well and I know what she likes. She loves the color pink and she always wants pink incorporated in everything. Her last fairy costume that I made for Halloween was all pink, but I need to kind of think of a way to make this one still pink and still what she likes, but a little bit different. Okay, so I made a little drawing for the design on Procreate. Don't judge it too harshly, but just to get the general vibes, I found this white dress on Amazon that I think I can use for the base. I'm trying to go for more of like a Renaissance fairy versus yeah. for Halloween, it was more like ballerina princess fairy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this time I wanted to have more of a, peasant vibe, but you know. But like a cute peasant <laughs> like a cottage peasant core. Yes, yes, yes. So using this as the base, so you get that like puff sleeve under, well, I don't know the proper terminology for the dress components, you know? Like, you went to fashion school. Yeah, but we didn't do historical peasantry wear. You weren't going into fashion school, like guys, when, when's the historical unit? Actually, that's a lie. We, I did have a fashion history class, but I don't remember it. Yeah. Anyway, you know what I mean? The little puff sleeve, white puff sleeve top. Then she already has this pink tutu, which I had her try on, it fits. And I think that'll be good for like a petty skirt, whatever it's called thing for fullness. And then then we get to the part that I actually have to make, which is the first layer of the skirt. I wanna do like a pink petal effect, mm -hmm. basically. And then I wanna take pieces off of her Halloween costume that I made and recycle it and mix that into the skirt too. And then I actually also have more of this same type of fabric already too. And then this is the hard part that I'm worried about is making this like corset leaf skirt belt piece lace up. Thing. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm trying to make it from scratch, I have to do the pattern making and everything from scratch. And then just to top it off with like a bunch of flowers and leaves and butterflies to make it look like butterflies are landing on her. Yeah. And like the whole thing is just very like garden nature. Probably just doing store-bought wings. I really want the wings to be cool. So I wanna try to think of a way where maybe I can like add stuff to the store-bought wings. We have some really good like wing inspiration on Pinterest. So maybe we should go back to that and kind of see how we can embellish it. I don't doubt you could make wings, but we have a week to do this costume and the dress itself 
the design is yeah. pretty complex. That's why I want to focus on the dress itself because that's the more important thing. If I have time, which I already know I won't, yeah. then I could try to do something more with the wings, but I think just time is, time is an issue. So that'll come last, but those are the vibes. I already ordered the white dress on Amazon, but I'm gonna need this pink fabric, this green fabric, and all the little embellishments. Mm -hmm. So probably Joann's, I'm thinking is the best place to shop. I love Joann's. And then also Zoe, I was thinking for the little shoes I saw on Pinterest, they had like added leaves and stuff to make it look like a, a shoe made out of leaves yeah. for the little fairy. These are from her Rapunzel costume. They're already beat up. Might as well use them as the base and I can like glue all the leaves on. And they have these little hooks. I think it'd be cute to do like a little lace up moment yeah. going up the ankle like vines. That would be very going cute. Going up the leg. So I'm gonna use this as the base. And so I need to add that to the shopping list. like leaves and vines and things. They have, I've seen like little like vinish type ribbon before. Yeah, I've seen that in the ribbon section. So I'm gonna add that on too. Beyond just my general sketch, I don't normally do a whole bunch of planning as far as making an exact shopping list with exact quantities and measurements and stuff like that. I kind of just tend to go to the store, see what they have, see what catches my eye, and estimate or guesstimate how much material I need for each part of it. Ooh, Miss Raven. <laughs> Miss Raven. We're not going to the toy aisle. Miss Raven. That's the one aisle we don't need to go down. I, can you buy me Minecraft Le Legos? Because okay. I'm a good employee. Minecraft Legos, I get Minecraft That doesn't even look fun. As I've done these projects over the years, I've gotten better at estimating these things, but I don't always get it right. And sometimes I have to make another trip back to the store, I'm not gonna lie. But since I'm not going off of any pre-made patterns, it's kind of hard to know what exactly I even need. Since I've made so many DIY costumes for all the previous Halloweens and parties and stuff like that, I have this big bin of costume stuff. I know I have stuff from when we were fairies for Halloween, so I definitely wanna pull out that stuff, but I also just need to kind of double check and see if there's any random items in there that I can use for this costume. You guys always ask me what I do with all the stuff that I make after that holiday or that party is over, and I tend to keep most stuff because a lot of it is surprising reusable. A lot of times, maybe a couple years later, I'll kind of circle back to that same theme or a similar theme and I'll be able to use that stuff again. So it pays to be a little bit of a hoarder sometimes. Stop being a heathen. Stop it. Easter baskets, that could be fairy baskets, more so for party decor, not for costuming, although it would be cute for Zaya to like pose with a basket, I guess, for photos. Got a bunch of florals in here left over from Valentine's Day. The pink and white ones and stuff like this could be used. I don't know if I'm gonna need more flowers to go on her dress, but definitely could be used for decor. This could be used for decor, all these flowers in here. I definitely need this, this is from our fairy Halloween, fairy ears, some butterfly clips, blue fairy wing glasses. It's not gonna match my outfit, but maybe somebody else will wear them. Just as I was gonna give up at the very, very bottom. <sighs> my wings, this is what I was looking forward to. I might wear them, I might have Zaya wear them. We'll see, they'll get used somehow. And I think that's probably all that's in here. My costume is gonna be very much store-bought because I am not gonna have time to make myself anything cool from scratch. So I'm just gonna like piece together stuff like this that I already have for mine. So perfect example of actually going back and reusing stuff from before, I'm actually going to deconstruct the skirt that I made for the fairy Halloween costume and use pieces of it for this costume. It'll save me some time and some effort with this costume because I honestly only have a couple of days and you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. But I'm definitely gonna expand upon it and add other stuff so that this costume looks different than the first one. Get out the way! My brand new seam ripper. It's deluxe. Long lasting, heavy duty, long lasting. Wow. Mm. Zaya's previous fairy costume skirt, which was a thrift store tutu that I sewed extra fabric on top of, but I don't want the thrift store tutu part anymore. And it's also too small for her now. So I wanna just take my add-ons off. I'm gonna try and seam rip it off. I might have to just cut the fabric, but they're kind of little like petal shapes. Save those. Anybody want a thrift store tutu? 
Does this look like this is how big Zaya was two Halloweens ago? It looks so small. That's crazy. I'm gonna need to make more of these because she's bigger now, so I have more surface area to cover and I want it to be like fuller looking anyway. So I have more fabric. I forgot that I did this lettuce hem going around the edge of all of them. That's gonna be a little bit tedious. But since I don't have Zaya here, cause she's at school and I forgot to measure her before, I'm gonna just use this that I know fits her. And then it's stretchy, of course. What to do first, I guess cut out more pieces. model. She's a bit big, but we just won't have it reach all the way around. It's actually supposed to be my size. I don't know if it actually still is. I know I want these to be like bunched up along this whole elastic, but I don't know how many of them I need. Too bad, because I only have a certain amount. Okay, I should be good. I really only like would need probably four or five more and I have seven pieces. So I'll be able to scrunch it together and make it even more full, which is good. It is just gonna take me a while to do this like lettuce hem zigzag stitch all the way around all of these rest of these seven petals. The news is it's pretty easy so I can put the machine in hyperspeed, but it is a little tedious. I have to be careful not to get these embellishments, these little beads like all caught in my machine. Little sheer petals are complete, the old ones and the new ones. I piled them up based on size because I have like some variation, like some shorter ones, some wider ones, some longer ones. And then I'm just gonna like, when I put it together, I'm gonna kind of alternate so it's balanced. But this is gonna be the outer layer. I need to do the underneath layer of this first. I was originally gonna do something a little bit more complicated for this underskirt layer, but again, I do not have much time to work on this costume and I still have a lot of other things to do for the party in general. So I decided to simplify it. I think I'm going to do, well, I am going to do a variation of a circle skirt, but it's a handkerchief skirt because you don't cut the circle part of the hem, you let the hem be handkerchiefy at the bottom. It requires two big squares of fabric and it requires some math to figure figure out like the measurements. And I think I understand it, but I'm not too sure. Something like this. It's like, so you, you take a big square of fabric, you fold it and fold it again into a smaller square, and then you cut the corner off and that becomes the waist hole. <laughs> And then the way the skirt falls when it's all said and done is like that. I have done this before, but I just don't remember. It was, it was actually my first ever assignment in my fashion design class in college, but I don't remember it. Based on the amount of fabric I bought, I'm basically gonna try to utilize as much of it. So I'm gonna cut this in half and then turn that into squares. Now this is 70 inches, so I'm cutting it down the middle at 35. I'm gonna try and see if it'll rip. No, damn it. I don't have proper fabric weights, so I'm using my whole entire Cricut. <laughs> to hold this down while I cut this in half. And then I need to make it into a uh, perfect square. So 35 going this way, hold it at 35. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Now you take your square, fold it into a smaller square in half and in half again. You take the folded corner, which is right here, and this is where you cut the waist out, and it's the waist measurement. I forgot <laughs> the equation. Okay, waist calculation. I need it to be a 21 inch waist, which is a little bigger than Zaya's waist because I'm gonna gather it in. You divide that by pi, 3.14. That gives you the diameter. Then you divide by two to give you the radius. So 3.3 inches down from the corner. I, let's just say three and a half. 
And so then I'll mark it here in it so it's easier to cut without shifting around. Cut this. Then you should have a square with a hole in the middle. Ta-da! And then when it drapes like that. And then I'm making two because I'm gonna layer them. Let me actually put this back so I can use it as a template for the other one. So I have my second one identical, but you layer them together like catacorner or whatever you call it, opposite, diagonal, like this. Line up the holes, but put the corners like this. And so then it creates like more, oh, I dropped it. <laughs> so then it creates more like points of drapiness at the bottom. So I'm going to connect these together first at the waist and then gather them onto a piece of elastic that fits Zaya's waist. Executive decision, I'm not gonna hem the bottom of the skirt because I don't feel like a fairy would hem her skirt. I feel like a fairy would have a little bit of fraying at the bottom of her skirt and it adds to the effect, right? I need to put elastic on it so it bunches up and it's stretchy. I feel like when you're thinking about a costume like this, you gotta think about it from head to toe. What are the hair accessories? What's the hairstyle, the earrings, the jewelry, the makeup look, of course the main outfit, any other accessories, but then you gotta also think about it down to the shoe. That's what's gonna make the whole thing look cohesive and just kind of like take it up a notch. Okay, for these shoes, Zaya's little crusty ballet flats from her Rapunzel costume. I'm just gonna cut this bow off first cause it's in my way. Here's my thought process. Covered in leaves, embellish on top. So I'm like mapping out the leaf placement for best coverage, like that on the toe. And then like you go around the sides like this. I'm gonna glue it and curve it so it's not poking out so much. And maybe I'll have to cut and trim. And then I'm thinking like a flower on the toe or something. Probably wanna add rhinestones. I'm gonna add the vines, but I think I just need to start with the leaves. And I'm just using the leaves off of this garland from Joanne's. I feel like this whole costume just wouldn't quite hit the same if I just had Zaya wearing regular flats or regular sandals. I mean, it could work and it could still be cute, but I like this a lot better. Zaya is home from school now on my first day of working on this costume and we can officially have her first fitting and see how she's liking it. This always is a little bit nerve wracking for me because Zaya is quite particular. She takes after her mama in that way and she will tell me if she doesn't like something. I been working on this the whole time she's at school not being able to get her feedback or get her approval on things so now I just kind of have to present my work to her and hope that she likes it one of my main concerns with this costume is making sure that she is at least somewhat comfortable mostly comfortable usually costumes and dress up outfits like this can never really be a hundred percent comfy you know beauty is pain but I do need her to be comfortable so that she can enjoy her birthday party when she's wearing it we have our model here here for her first fitting. We've got her underdress from Amazon and her tutu that she already had. And we gotta shove this down inside like that. I'm gonna put elastic so it's more gathered higher up. But what I really needed to do was measure for your elastic. This was my estimate and it's too small. So I'm glad I'm checking this, especially since it's gonna be layered on top of stuff like that with a half inch overlap. Good one, let me measure that so I know too. It's more like 22. It'll also have these on top. What do you think? Okay. So far so good. There's also gonna be a whole other thing on top of that. So it's gonna be a few layers. You think that's gonna be comfortable enough at the party? No? This so far is fine. And then the shoe, I'm not done with it. <laughs> Try it on, cause I don't remember. They're actually a little loose, but I'm gonna add a little thing right here that will lace up and tie around your ankle, which will also help them stay on better. When I first saw the costume on the first day, I thought it was going good and it started looking really pretty already. I think my mom is gonna do good because every single year she makes me a costume. It's really good and fun and like very pretty. I think it's kind of in between for my mommy because it's like very good, but it also looks hard to make, but it's also like in the middle.
is Zoe. I need to step on your pedals. <laughs> My bare feet. <laughs> I know we want to have a really delineated schedule for the day. I have it set so we have from about 8.30 to 1.30 to film. For the photo op, I have an hour, wings and things, 45 minutes. The centerpiece, 60 minutes. General decorations, 90 minutes. Food setup, 45 minutes. I'm not 100% sure about this. Yeah. Some of these feel really long. Yeah. I'm interested in capturing photos of each finished station with me, you know, Pinterest, Instagram. Yeah. I'm setting up, here it is done. Party starts at two. So that also I think should include when, while we're doing those photos, that includes like Zaya. She's dressed at some point what, to get photos of her too. What I was thinking is that at 1.30, like it's, it's it's getting costume, go through each station, like snap these photos mm, really quick. Okay. Not a lot of people are gonna show up right at two, so we can get away with spending That's true. the first 30 minutes of the party capturing content. Yeah, because I definitely want pictures of her in her costume, like before people get here, kind of with each station. Yeah. Pictures of us together, obviously are, both are, of us dressed. When we're doing the setup shoots, like are you gonna be in full costume? No, I mean, I plan to have hair and makeup done and like costume ready to throw on. What's it called? Handkerchief skirt, over skirt, under skirt, which she may not even need this, we'll see. I feel like she's gonna be annoyed with it and wanna take it off, but it's good that everything's in layers so she can kind of pick and choose and take stuff off if she gets uncomfortable. But now I need the over, over skirt, belt, leaf, corset thingy for my design. Since I don't have Zaya here cause she's at school, once again, I'm using this dress that I know fits her as like my model for measurements. I'm trying to see how like wide I want the little belt situation to be, corset. Just a bit wider than this waistband. I would say four and a half to five wide. I know her waist measurement is 22. I kind of want it to come together and have like space. So I'll probably subtract like an inch and a half as far as the total wraparound length. So it'll be like 20 inches around to leave a gap, like four inches wide. And then I want to add like the leaf shapes coming down, which should probably be around six, six and a half. Cause I want them to be like a shorter layer on top. Yeah, I would say like seven inches max long for the leaf shapes. So that means I'm gonna make a paper pattern. Stole some paper from Zaya's chalkboard. If the whole thing is 20, then half is 10. And I want it, what did I say? Five inches wide? All this house and I still never feel like I have enough workspace. And so the lace up things will be like that. I'm gonna cut this part of the fabric first cause then I need to like see how the leaves match up to it. This is really taking me back to my college days of actually learning pattern making, making my own custom patterns, cutting them out of paper and then transferring them over to the fabric. This is like kind of crazy because sometimes I'm like, wait a minute, I do actually use what I learned in school. A lot of times I feel like, why did I get that fashion design degree? Am I even really gonna ever use that or like get my money's worth out of going to school for fashion design? But I mean, with stuff like this, I am using what I learned in college. I am technically using my degree for the leaves that come down only have this much space to work with. So I'm trying to see 20 inches, five, four inch leaves, four inches across. And I said about seven inches down. And like the shape is like this ish, but I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna cut the rough shape and then I'm gonna fold it in half and cut it actually symmetrical. nicer shape and since this is four I should be able to fit five of them I'm gonna cut out ten of these so I can make them double-sided so it'll be easier to you'll see <laughs> I'm gonna do little leaf sandwiches Damn it. <laughs> okay I'm just doing a regular straight stitch all around I've got two layered up I'm actually choosing to use this fabric inside out on purpose because I don't like the right side, I like the inside. And so normally you would be putting right sides together, but I'm doing wrong sides together on purpose. But I got two layers and I'm sewing around so I can make a nice clean finished edge. And then I need 
need to iron it to get it nice and flat, but now it's like a clean finished little leaf. And I could even like top stitch it, I probably should, to make it even more nice looking. Ironing for flatness. We used to get in trouble for this at school if we didn't press our seams. And you're supposed to press to get them super flat. So everything is like crispy. And then, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna top stitch it. Which just means I'm adding an extra stitch to kind of like make it look nice. Hand crank for accuracy. Ta-da! If I wanted to be real fancy, I could like stitch on the little leaf veins. I'm not doing that. The way I did my original pattern was to just have them right next to each other like this, but I do think it'll look better if they like overlap like this. Now for the big reveal, I think this should work. It just might be a little hard to turn inside out. Ta-da! Now I got a clean edge on both sides. It needs to be ironed, but you see the vibes. Iron and top stitch. It's giving a uh, Princess Tiana, mm. Princess and the Frog vibes. Imagine on a smaller child so it comes together more in the front. But yeah, I think it's fine without the boning. I was gonna add some boning, like actual corset vibes to add structure, but I don't think she needs it. Comes together like this in the front and I just need to add my eyelids. Eyelet application is complete. It's giving Peter Pan, Princess and the Frog, Medieval Times. And right on time, I got this in the mail from Amazon. Cause I'm thinking about using it for the lacing, but does it fit? Yeah, I guess so. I could do this or I could do a ribbon. Zaya can also choose when she gets home, I guess. I don't know how to guess how much to cut for this and I don't want to cut it wrong. Okay, we get the idea. We'll let Zaya weigh in on it, but that's pretty much done. I wanted to add flowers and leaves going around the neckline. I might just hot glue them. I do have fabric glue, but it's a little harder to work with. Let me finish the shoes first. I was thinking about adding like a little flower to the toe, like how Tinkerbell has like a little puff ball or something, which could be cute. 
I kind of like them plain. I'm sure Zaya probably wants the flowers added. I'll ask her, she'll be home in a minute. And then they've got the little attachments here. So I was gonna use this and then make a little lace up around the ankle. But that's pretty much it. For this second fitting, I really just wanted to make sure that this green corset thing was gonna actually fit and look right. It's always hard to be working on these things without having Zaya there. It would be nice if I could try it on her midway through, but I'm having to work on it while she's at school. For your second fitting, I have completed this part of the skirt this part, remember from your old costume? So I redid it into like a bigger one basically. So it's a separate layer. So I made everything separate layers in case anything is uncomfortable. You can like put it all on for pictures, but then you can take off certain parts if it's bothering you. And then the green part last. So I need you to try it on and make sure I made everything the right size. So first of all, what do you think so far? Good. Good? You like it? You like this part? This is what I finished today. And then you're gonna have to tell me if you think it looks good with this as the lace up, or I also have like pink ribbon or a plain rope. This one. You like this one? And then the shoes so far. I'm gonna put the flowers on. That's what I was gonna ask you. Do you want me to do it like this? Or what do you think? How should it go? Like that. Just one on the toe? So can you go change into, like fully change into that? And then I'll help you put on the other part. You don't like the tutu? You don't like the poofiness? Let's see it without it then. You like it better like that? I was gonna do like flowers going all right here and probably just like all around. And then these are the wings, which it's actually good that your top is white so it can blend in a little bit because these are not the fancy kind where I'm gonna have to adjust these like I did on your other ones and tighten them, but you kind of get the idea. What do you think? I know the wings are loose. I need to tighten them so they sit up right like that. You like it? What do you think about the skirt? So just no tutu underneath? Yeah, I think that's okay. And then I'll put the flowers and then you'll have your little shoes. What else do you think it needs? Anything else you wanna add? No, you're happy with it? Okay. Okay, finishing off the little shoes. Zaya requested the little flowers on the toe. So we will honor her request. I'm just gonna hot glue it directly on. And then I think it needs a little razzle dazzle. I think everything needs extra razzle dazzle with rhinestones. I have all these iridescent stones. So I'm just gonna kind of like, I don't know, freestyle it. I like this fabric fusion permanent fabric adhesive with this little small tip to it. Hopefully it's not clogged. Make it look like little water droplets or something. Let's come back to it. I wanna make progress on some other major parts. But that's like the basic shoe, except for, I guess, let's see for the lace up. Over her foot, around the ankle, crisscross, and then crisscross up the leg Little. and tie. Well, here's the shoes. <laughs> you get the idea. I also want to flower a ties and bling a ties the top part of the white mm. underdress using a little piece of cardboard to kind of help give me a surface to glue on. 
I think I'm just gonna mainly use hot glue because it's the fastest and easiest and I won't really be trying to like wash this, launder it and keep it, it'll be fine. But I'm gonna take a bunch of flowers and leaves off of my vines that I've been using and just do some sort of something. Let's see. I have to decide if this bow is gonna still be here. Maybe I should just cut it off. I just don't know how to, how to work around it. Like I feel like it's, it's like competing. So I'm doing all the leaves first as like a base and I do want to do it all the way around, but obviously I'm just like working on the front side. I gotta cut the extra little nubs off the back of them so they lay a little bit more flat. Not gonna lie, I struggled a little bit with placing on these flowers. I thought this was gonna be super fast and easy, but it just wasn't giving the right effect at first. Luckily, I was able to peel them off and completely redo it. <laughs> I'm taking everything off because it was looking too much like, I was getting Hawaiian vibes for some reason. And I looked back at my Enzo picks and it's a lot more like random, messy, mixed together, different things mixed together vibes. And so I went in my collection and I got a few more options to like mix in and I'm gonna try and do it just more effortlessly. I don't know. Also executive decision, this bow is throwing me off so I'm cutting it. It's a nice little finding to keep for something. Still has like a base of leaves underneath it, but it needs to be more like. It wouldn't be me if I didn't add some rhinestones to this costume. And Zaya is a sparkling glam type of girl as well, so I knew she would appreciate it. I like it. It looks better than what I was originally doing. So I need to like wait for this to dry like the rhinestone part so I can flip it over and kind of continue it around the back. I feel like I should continue it around the back. Maybe I don't have to, I'll think about it. But I'm trying to see where else throughout the costume I wanna kind of add these same type of embellishments. I thought about maybe putting some on here, but I don't wanna like overwork it. I do have a few of these little flowers from the first costume. I had them kind of scattered across this part of the skirt and I have some more, so I feel like I might as well put those back on. I like how like we have repeating elements, makes it feel balanced. She'll have these same flowers in her hair, so that'll repeat. We could do something with the wrist. I feel like it's not crucial and I know she's gonna wanna take it off. So I think I'm gonna focus my efforts on the wings. I felt kind of lame just buying regular store-bought fairy wings off of Amazon for this costume because I had so many cool inspo picks where the wings were really the focal point. A lot of like intricate custom designs that just looked more whimsical and realistic. And I know it's definitely possible to make your own DIY fairy wings from scratch, but time Time is of the essence and I just knew I wasn't gonna have time to do all that. So as a compromise, I'm using the store-bought wings, but I'm adding a bunch of rhinestones to it. Y'all gotta let me know in the comments down below if y'all think that the wings need anything else or if I should just leave them as is with just the rhinestones. I don't want the costume to be like too busy and too like crafty looking, if that makes sense. What kind of way do I want the rhinestones? Do I wanna try to do like or like doing some sort of 
or just sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. I have a lot of rhinestones and we have two hours till she gets home. <laughs> so I'm supposed There's to be time. done with this. But if I start, I can't leave it halfway done. Maybe I'll do them like not right up next to each other. This is the part that shows the most. So it's, it should like down. burst out from here. That would be cute. Yeah. And then I can do it like bigger to smaller spread out. I think that's doable. Last few stones. It didn't take as long as I thought. So it is fully stoned. I think that looks really cute. I do think that there's room to add some sort of something throughout some little swirly whirls, maybe some puff paint, maybe glitter, maybe more rhinestones, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now. I'm gonna have Zaya try everything on, see how it's looking. And then there's still a little bit of time to add more before the party, but I think this is gonna be my stopping point for now. Sometimes when you start adding too many hand-drawn details, it just starts looking a little too DIY. You never wanna overwork your work, you know? But I'm just not sure if these wings look like cool enough. Y'all let me know. Now, Zaya can be picky when it comes to sensory things relating to like makeup and extra accessories and certain hairstyles and even certain like textures on her clothes. I mean, you know how kids are. They wanna be comfortable. Sometimes they don't wanna do all that extra stuff, which is totally understandable. When we were fairies, for Halloween, I had like prosthetic pointy ears. I did like a full makeup look. I had like a lot of stuff in my hair, but Zaya didn't. And I got some comments of people being like, why did you do your fairy look so special and detailed and intricate, but Zaya's was more plain. Like acting as if I did that on purpose, like I focused on myself, but I didn't do Zaya. When the truth is, Zaya just didn't want all that stuff on her. <laughs> I asked her if she wanted makeup, she said no. I asked her if she wanted ears, she said no. And I told Totally respect that. But this time Zaya said she did want to do a makeup look. So this is kind of like our makeup trial, like how you do like a bridal makeup trial before the wedding. Cause honestly, I've never really done this exact type of like fairy makeup look. And I'm not a makeup artist. I don't specialize in doing makeup on other people at all. So I need to kind of do this trial run and even see if I can do this in the first place. Okay, Miss Ma'am, for your final try on fitting, we're gonna do a full, almost full try on. So we're testing the makeup. You're gonna have your hair in a nice braided style. So your hair is not gonna be done for this cause you're getting your hair braided next weekend, next week to be fresh for the party. And it's gonna be like some nice boho braids and we could do like an updo with the braids. So we'll do more fancy stuff with your hair for the actual party. But for the makeup, we can kind of try that out now. I have a few inspo picks. We can do fun eyeshadow and blush like that. This one with the little wings around the eyes. This one with the dots and the blush on the nose. Oh yeah, you can do um, rhinestones glued on. I think the main thing is like the blush and the white freckles and the little something like colorful on the eyes. So what do you want your main eyeshadow color to be? I mean, your dress is pink, white, and green. So should we stick to that same color palette? You like the blush and the freckles. We can do like, I think this girl like has like a little, almost like a little heart on her nose. But also at your birthday party, there's gonna be someone doing like glitter tattoos and face painting. So if you want like more, they can add more to it. So let's just start with something. We have time to like figure it out. Okay, what do you think about for lips? Like a pinkish reddish kind of. A pinkish reddish? Okay, how about this color? Lip gloss. Ooh, okay, lightly. Is that good? Okay, anything else I should add to the makeup? Nope. You like it like that? Cute. Let's put some clips in your hair and get dressed. 
I think the makeup turned out pretty cute. I mean, it's not like my best, best work. And I think there's definitely some, you know, room for improvement for the actual day of the party, but it really came together when I added the mascara and the lip gloss. Definitely not used to seeing Zaya with any kind of makeup on. So I was kind of like, now nah, wait a minute, but I think she liked it and it does look really cute. And then hold this up so it's like lined up with the with the scrunchy part, you know? And then I'm gonna kind of hold it with this. Okay, you can let go now. Okay, give us a spin in that. Ooh. Can't forget the wings. If you don't have wings, it'll look like an elf without pointy ears. Should we do pointy ears on you? Yeah. Well, if your hair is down, you won't see it, but when on the day of the party, maybe we'll do something up. Then we also got these butterfly clips. Pretty. Which can go in your hair and can also clip onto your clothes. You like that one? How much more should we do? That's good. That's good? Should we do any on your outfit though? Where should I put this one? Right on the skirt somewhere? I think this fairy costume is definitely an improvement from your other one that I made for Halloween. What do you think? Better than last time, because last time it looked more like a ballerina. <laughs> Yeah, it was more ballerina princess fairy, like fairy princess. Remember you said you wanted to be a pink fairy princess. And this time it's enchanted fairy garden. So it's a lot more flowers, butterflies. And now I present to you Zaya, the whimsical fairy. So the final outfit was really pretty and fun and like more wood than how, how I was expecting it to be and it was really, really pretty and cute and I really loved it. My favorite part was everything because it was very like, all, it was all pretty. I liked how the wings were very like pearly and shiny, like a real fairy's wings because that makes it look more realistic like a real fairy. And I actually wanted the makeup so I could like look like a real fairy because fairies have like those white freckles going around over their nose and like those little shiny parts on their nose and it's very pretty and cute. I think my mommy did kind of good, but since that was a practice, I think it'll look better for the party. A real party, I hope she fixes like the main part, like the freckles and stuff, because the freckles kinda, there's too much blush and it looked like, kinda like all pink and a little bit like cheetah-ish because of the spots. At the party, I wanted to do it more like soft blush instead of like really deep blush and like the freckles to be like smaller a little bit. I'm excited to get my braids done, but I kind of feel a little scared because I might have to eat dinner while getting my braids done and stay in a chair for a long time. I was happy and it felt fun, but it was kind of weird with all the like people around looking at us. One person said I looked very pretty and like this little boy kept coming up to us. He like, fairy, fairy. I'm really excited to wear my costume to my party because I think my friends are really gonna like it and it's really cute. 
I'm pretty pleased with how this costume turned out. I got a lot done in a short amount of time. Again, I only had like three days to work on this. And I definitely think I achieved the more woodland look this time compared to like the ballerina princess look of last time. Again, I didn't want to do too, too much because this needed to be comfortable and something that she can like run around and play in at the party. But I still wanted it to be pretty detailed so that she could feel special on her birthday. We are going to be passing out fairy wings and accessories for all the guests to wear. So I kind of had to make sure that Zaya's costume was like a step above the rest so that she would stand out amongst all the other little fairies at the party. And I think I did that. Now we still have a little bit of time until the party and Zaya is going to be getting her hair braided into like a special style so that she can have more of like a whimsical boho look with her hair. I plan on putting a lot of like charms and butterflies and stuff like that in it. So that'll be like an extra touch to the costume. And then like I said, I'm going to kind of tweak some things with her makeup look. And Zaya also even said she does want to do the pointy fairy ears this time. So I'm going to try and do those on her too. Let me know what you think of the costume and if there's anything that you think I should add and stay tuned to see how the entire party turns out.